Hello everyone and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. Most types of warfare have been around for hundreds, if not thousands of years. However, the first true military submarines weren't introduced until World War II. Since then, the need for these underwater defenders has become increasingly apparent. Shoot, two, four, two, four. Four! Two. Especially with the dawn of intercontinental ballistic missiles. Currently, the U.S. Navy has around 70 total submarines in operation. Many dating back to the 90s, 80s, or even 70s. In order to remain at the forefront of submarine technology, the United States is hoping to replace this multi-billion dollar fleet with new, more advanced submarines. Right now, those hopes ride on the backs of the Columbia-class submarine. So far, these nuclear-powered ballistic missile submersibles only exist in artists' renderings. But once introduced, they are planned to have a lifespan of around 42 years. They will also feature sail-mounted dive planes, an electric drive, and some of the most advanced tactical technology in the world. Currently, the U.S. submarine fleet includes 29 Los Angeles fast attack subs and 18 Ohio-class ballistic or guided missile subs. The former is referred to as SSBNs, which stands for Ship, Submersible, Ballistic, and Nuclear. These powerful submersibles were first introduced back in the 1980s and have since become one of the workhorses of the U.S. arsenal. Ohio-class subs are more than 560 feet long and boast a beam of 42 feet. They are nuclear-powered, with two geared turbines propelling them underwater at speeds of up to 29 miles per hour. They can reach depths of more than 800 feet and are capable of such long missions that available food supplies only limit their range. Their primary function is to be a sea-based nuclear deterrent as part of the land, sea, and air-based triad. This is a three-pronged military force designed to ensure that no enemy could possibly destroy the U.S.'s nuclear capabilities in one single attack. Given the importance of this job, the Ohio class will soon be phased out in favor of the upcoming Columbia models. According to estimates, these new vessels will be the most advanced and quietest subs ever constructed. Again, nuclear-powered submarines will carry enough fuel to stay on course for up to 30 years. They typically carry a crew consisting of 140 enlisted and 15 officers, and these men and women cannot stay at sea indefinitely. Moreover, while the nuclear power supply might last for three decades, the vessel itself requires an immense amount of maintenance. This is performed at sea by the crew members in charge of maintenance. These crewmen are tasked with performing both routine and emergency maintenance on virtually every part of the ship. Here, you can see crewmen aboard the USS Texas checking various electrical components to ensure they are working properly. There's a saying aboard a ship that if it moves, it can break. That's why it's imperative to make sure auxiliary engines, generators, and other complex components are well oiled and operating as intended. To 
despite having minimal space, submarine commanders prefer to keep their crew members in tip-top shape by running frequent drills and training exercises. When diving, water is pumped into the ballast tanks to allow the vessel to sink. At the same time, the pitch of the sub can reach up to 45 degrees. As diving is an invasive maneuver, it is essential that it be done as quickly and smoothly as possible. By holding regular dive drills, crew members can practice assuming dive positions and tying down as many loose items as possible in a concise amount of time. Surfacing exercises are also important, especially when it comes to special circumstances, such as surfacing through the ice, This involves cautious ballast release to control the overall buoyancy of the vessel, ensuring it doesn't surface too quickly or attempt to break through ice that is too thick. As hard as a submarine crew might work or train, they cannot do everything while at sea. This is why they are regularly tasked with returning to the dry dock for inspection and repairs to the external parts of the vessel. Those subs can enter virtually any dry dock, providing it is large enough. Floating dry docks like this one in San Diego make the docking process more convenient for subs by deeper clearance. Dry dock personnel can then raise the entire dock, exposing the whole hull of the submarine and allowing for easy cleaning and repairs. Traditional dry docks operate a bit differently. They are merely gated channels that fill with water so vessels can enter. They then close their gates and pump the water out. This procedure can be clearly observed in this footage of the USS Fitzgerald, an Arleigh Burke-class destroyer entering a dry dock in Yokosuka, Japan. In this case, the Fitzgerald is not undergoing routine maintenance, but looking to inspect damage caused during a collision with another vessel. The ship is gently guided into the flooded dry dock channel by several powerful tugboats. Once it is in place with its keel positioned over the dry dock supports, the water is slowly pumped out back into the sea. This gives engineers a full view of the hull, allowing for the damage to be inspected, evaluated, and repaired. Destroyers like the Fitzgerald are highly versatile ships, participating in anti-ballistic missile missions, anti-submarine warfare, and strategic land strikes. The average Arleigh Burke-class ship is more than 500 feet long and armed to the teeth with surface-to-air missiles, torpedoes, and more. They also carry around 22 officers and up to 350 enlisted men and women. Though not quite as cramped as your average submarine, the berthing area of a destroyer is by no means comfortable. Generally, a 24-bunk space will consist of three sinks, one shower, and two toilets. There is also little separation between one's professional life aboard the ship and their personal one. Most bunks are stacked in numbers of two or three, and many crew members do their best to make this space their own. That said, it can be difficult to do so given the limited amount of room. 
we're allowed to have like an 8 by 11 sized area for for family photos or your kitty cat your doggy goldfish whatever you want um, we each have our EVDs or emergency escape breathing devices just in case you know bad business happens lights go down there's a fire and smoke we can clock that guy on and we've got good breathing air for about 15 minutes to be able to egress out of this space in topside. Sleeping areas are not the only place aboard a destroyer where one will find themselves struggling for personal space. Gym and fitness areas are also incredibly cramped and boast limited options for staying in shape. Fortunately, crew members have learned to work together so that they can maintain themselves as well. Ultimately, even the most advanced and capable military vessel is only as good as the men and women keeping her in ship shape while underway and at home. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.